We're talking with Scott Shepard. He's got an article out at Real Clear Politics. It's, it's incisive. It's understandable. It makes good sense of nonsense that's going on in American corporations today. Uh, Scott, tell us about your article referencing Vanguard and State Street. Yeah, well, as your, uh, as your viewers may know, um, most American investments are handled by three investment houses, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. I'm, I'm invested in one of those three. You may be, you may be as well. Um, and they, they uh, between them, control $20 trillion of American wow. assets. Now, before the, the rise of mutual funds and then ETFs, uh, most shareholders didn't really vote the, their proxy votes. They didn't uh, take advantage of the power of their ownership because, of course, when you own a share in a company, you are a fractional owner of that company. And the executives and directors work for you. They don't work for themselves. They don't work. You're the owner of that, the fractional owner of that company. Well, about a decade ago, it dawned on the uh, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, and somewhat earlier, Ron O'Hanley, the CEO of State Street, and, uh, and the folks at the top of, of Vanguard, that they could have immense personal power if they started using other people's assets, your and my assets, the assets that we've given over to them for their expertise and investment, not for their political nows, uh, given over to them that they could start using the power of our investment to force corporations to do their personal policy preferences. And so that's been, after the 30 or 40 years of small-time small uh, shareholder activism on the left, that's been the main driver of the last decade. You've got Larry Fink, who goes out and brags about forcing behaviors at corporations. So which for behaviors does he force? He forces equity-based discrimination, which means unconstitutional discrimination against the non-diverse. So, so illegal discrimination against white people, men, straight people, he, uh, and, and the religious. He, um, uh, he also pushes uh, uh, net zero by 2035 or 2050, which every day is proving to be more and more of nonsense. It can't be done. It can't be done effectively. And I mean, it's the, the COP, the, the biannual or however often it is, UN chance to, to get together and spend U.S. Uh, tax dollars money to spin fantasies about decarbonization. So he's got his mansion. He's got his jet. He's got his limousine. While he and his buddies, who all have the same thing, meet at COPs or meet uh, um, annually at Davos to figure out how they can run the world and not cut their carbon emissions at all while constraining our lives ever further into narrow boxes and narrow opportunities. You know, I wouldn't have a problem if Larry Fink came out and said, all right, I'm starting an environment fund that's going to invest in these things uh, and, and I want you to join me because this is the objective that we have. But they didn't do that. In fact, they've taken a lot of index dollars People that say, "I just buy me the S and P 500, or just just buy me this one ind industry in an ETF," where they're expecting the shares to be voted in the interests of the corporation producing the maximum profit, as opposed to achieving a social objective. So they're not even holding themselves out necessarily when they go into the 401ks and they're selling themselves to the big pension plans as being, you know, well, we're going to be your pro-environment fund because if they had an actual debate on this, they'd lose. They'd lose because people, for the most part, don't buy into that stuff. But they're taking... Well, Kevin, it's even worse than that. Take BlackRock as an example, but it's true of all three. They're shutting down their explicitly labeled ESG funds because those ESG funds are losing a ton of money. And, and it's, it's becoming increasingly clear to investors, we don't want to invest in the supposedly clean energy that's not clean because it's not reliable and it's not affordable. So they're shutting down their ESG funds. But even as they do that, Larry Fink went out this summer and said, look, I don't want to call it ESG anymore because people are on to what ESG is. I want to call it conscientious capitalism. 